Hi everybody, welcome to this edition of the Spartan Sports Report here on TV3 and Sam Lai. Very happy to have the head basketball coach of CHS, Kerry Brown, with us. Kerry, welcome. Thanks, Fran. Glad Sam, to have you, as always. Good to see you guys again. Thanks for having me down tonight. You got your Spartan red on. Just worked out that way. <laughs> got to go to practice when we get done here, so looks good. Need to wear something that worked for the day job, the the after school job, and worked out for you this interview. <laughs> it's sharp, sharp looking. Appreciate it. Thank you. Well, it's almost here, Kerry. Yep, just about right around the corner. Right around the corner, and We've got tonight's practice, tomorrow's practice, and and then uh, Wednesday, tip it up. Union what County comes to town. Union County Patriots, been a part of it for now. This will probably be my fifteenth year, I think. Mm -hmm. um, great atmosphere, great event, great evening, um, homecoming for a lot of people, and sure. get to catch up and um, hopefully. Enjoy a Spartan victory, and then uh, enjoy some good food and family the next day. I like to say that it's uh, like the advertisement for the Masters, a tradition like none other. Mm -hmm. I can relate to that. It is mm -hmm. very much so. Nothing quite like it. No. If you're from uh, either, either one of these two communities, um, experiencing it all those years, yes. and you know the dribblers <laughs> and uh, the crowds and the, the game night atmosphere, um, it's... I don't know if there's any place else that matches it on opening night of the Indiana High School boys basketball season. I don't either. And, um, you know, we've, over the years, we've dominated in that. But there have been times that they've come over here and, and uh, upset the Spartans. Sure. And way back, um, back during single class, back in the 70s, maybe uh, you wouldn't even have called it an upset. They were, they were that close. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um they, I've they been come a part ready, of one of those, so I'm, well, I'm well aware well, I'm, of it. I'm sorry to bring that up, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> what are you no, expecting? It, it's just, I mean, to me, it's just, it doesn't allow you to get comfortable with any game. I mean, um, they've been very good, and I think there's probably some years and games where maybe they were the favorite since I've mm -hmm. been here, and we were able to get them, um, especially when Coach Detweiler was over there. Um, I just thought, you know, this is a toss-up game, and we were able to get them. But, uh, yeah, I think it was my second year um, involved in the rivalry that um, they beat the group and the coaches that we had that year. And um, it's just something because we're the bigger school. We're favored. Um, I don't want to say that puts any more pressure on you, but um, you're supposed to win these games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on, on paper, but yep. we don't play them on paper. <laughs> no, so. no, not at all. Yeah, and um, we're not the big, big school that we used to be either. I mean, that, that uh, enrollment-wise, uh, yeah, we still double them probably, but but uh, we don't triple them like we used to. None of that matters. It's just, you know, you go out. Um, we're the smaller school in some of the games, um, but I, I don't know that that factors into our scouting reports or our preparation that they have 3,000 students and we have 900 or we have 900 and they have 400. Um, it's just, you know, you get to put five guys out there on the court. Uh, maybe some sports like football uh, are dominated by the larger schools because of a number type thing. But in basketball, I think it, it actually levels the playing field where because there's only five participants, uh, maybe a smaller school can... Uh, participate against a larger school. Mm -hmm. And and we've proven that when uh, we go to Indianapolis and play teams like Lawrence North or Noblesville or or um, Ben Davis, those types of schools that uh, are much larger than we are, but we're always competitive. Well, the one we beat Lawrence North one year, two of the years we thought we had a shot to beat them, um, and then just one of the four years in that four-year um, cycle, it wasn't a close game. Mm -hmm. So, you know, realistically, we could have won three of those four games, and we would have been considered the Union County uh, of that game. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Kerry, you're coming off an 18-7 and seven record from last year. What, what can we expect this year out of the Spartans? Um, we return seven seniors in our program, so I, while I think we do have some experience, mm -hmm. um, there's still been a lot of uh, teaching, reteaching going on here in the, um, the early part of the season. We had a good summer. Um, we have four uh, seniors with a lot of experience, and then uh, Gavin Pearson comes back to our program after taking a year off. Uh, Braden, Taco Pearson, I think would have contributed last year, but he broke his wrist. He would be the sixth senior, and then um, Cody Naylor, 
who dressed but didn't get much time last year, is one of the toughest kids on our team, pound for pound, would round out that group of seniors. So we have a lot of experience, but um, I'm not going to say that we're all on the same page yet and that uh, we've arrived. Mm -hmm. It's early in the year, a lot, a lot of uh, teaching, reteaching things to mm -hmm. do. Um, and then from the junior class, we've got uh, Blaine Hornsby, um, Brady Cloyd, a little bit thin in the, the junior class. And then we've got one sophomore. I'm probably going to leave something out, but we've got one sophomore um, that's kind of in the mix, and that'd be Jaden Peterson. Um, the other sophomore that dressed with us and played in the uh, scrimmage Saturday was um, Xander McHenry. So that should make about 10 or 11 guys, but realistically, um, you know, we can play about eight of them. So if you're not in the top eight, you're not going to get the, the minutes, the playing time. But that can fluctuate and change from week to week. And I think it creates um, some competition in practice, which is always a good thing. Um, for example, I think Blaine's done a pretty good job in our preseason thus far. Um, he's our one, right now anyway, our one uh, lone, true, kind of a big guy coming off the bench mm -hmm. that can spell the front line. And then if you're not... Um, um, spelling one of those guys, that means you're, you know, working for backup minutes at one of the wing or guard spots. And um, we've got Josh Williams on the perimeter, one of our seniors. We've got uh, his brother James in the post. There's Braxton uh, Myers, who's going to play both inside and outside for us because of his skill yes. set and versatility. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Lucas Barron is another senior that his skill set allows him to play both inside and outside. So. Uh, if, if you're not a frontline reserve, then you're competing against um, some pretty good guys in our lineup right now. That's good. And you may have to wait your turn. Well, that's great to have that kind of quality backup for your players. Well, back in the old days, um, I think there used to be a lot of juniors that actually played on the junior varsity basketball mm -hmm. team because yes. of the depth that you might have yes. in a senior class or even a junior class and you just weren't good enough to crack the rotation. But then the next year they would have really good senior years because they'd practiced against those guys all mm -hmm. year mm -hmm. and um, just to develop themselves as players. But you don't see that as much anymore where a, a kid maybe is a junior on the JV team and um, because of a depth thing in front of him. But I, I feel like we've got some depth this year and uh, we played all 11 guys in the scrimmage Saturday. Um, well, there are some things we need to work on. And we talked about that a little bit after the scrimmage Saturday, but we win 58-32, something like that, against Knights 10 on Saturday. And, um, you know, offensively we did some good things. I thought we shared the ball. You know, Josh Williams had like seven assists. Um, Braxton had 22 points. Uh, Lucas Barron had five or six assists. Um, James Williams had 10 points. So we put three guys in double figures, and we had a fourth guy with eight points. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's that's going to be good for our offense. We just have to tighten things up defensively, I believe, um, do a better job communicating. And then I think, and, and again, we haven't even played game one yet, but um, um, just the, the intensity that we play each possession with on the defensive end, I think, um, um, between now and the end of the season, there's a lot of room for improvement there. Then you've got uh, three guys that were a big part of the football team that you've just gotten, and so they got to get their, their basketball conditioning back. <laughs> yeah, that's probably something that's lacking right now is, is just the overall conditioning. I mean, it's a different game, um, whereas ours is nonstop for a while until mm -hmm. you get a whistle or something like that. And, you know, in football, it's you have a play and then you take uh, X amount of seconds off and then you have another play. So it is different, the, the conditioning for those two sports. And then the other thing that really probably takes a little bit of time is just, you know, maybe reacquiring your shooting stroke, um, getting back in the gym and, and grooving your shot. And um, that'll take a little bit of time as well for those guys. Seemed to me the other day, and I enjoyed watching them. I, I liked what I saw, but uh, seemed like we were a little more up-tempo with, with this group. You know, I think athletically, depending on who we're playing, mm -hmm. you know, depending on who we're playing, I think we've got a, a fairly athletic, quicker group. Um, you know, we don't have a great big aircraft carrier slow guy at all mm -hmm. um, on our team. So um, I think we do move pretty quick. We're pretty agile and, um, you know, hopefully that'll enable us to not only run offensively and get some easy baskets in transition, 
but I hope that um, helps us with our defense in terms of deflections, which then leads to some runouts and some easy baskets on the offensive end. But I hope we see that athleticism on both sides of the basketball. You know, back up here a minute, uh, you're talking about the core group, of maybe eight, but um, those other guys do play a big part in it because you never know when you're going to have uh, illness or, or uh, injury of some kind that those guys have to be ready. Well, and that's the, you hope you never have to deal with the injury bug or the illness bug, but um, that's a part of it. We lost uh, Ethan Smith a couple, mm -hmm. two, maybe three years ago to um, a knee injury, and that was in January, and his season was over. Mm -hmm. And then you're kind of scrambling a little bit, and um, Bo, Cole Martin did a good him. job coming in. Mm -hmm. Bo injured his knee right at the end of the year, and we were able to you know, still win a couple games in a sectional and a regional game with him hobbled. But you never like to see that. But then you only as good as your bench or how, how you've developed your bench. So um, I think the assistant coaches, myself, um, you know, we're always looking to strengthen and try to develop those kids that are coming off the bench. Um, you never can, you know, prepare for an injury, but it's one of those things, illness or injury, that um, you just have to be ready for. And uh, hopefully you've done a good job in getting those other guys ready. Sure. You've always had a good bench. Okay, Ray. We've tried. Um, some years it's longer than others. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, um, you know, I think there's different approaches. Uh, there's some people that place five or six guys, and there's other people that try to play more, sure. especially if they do press and trap and play more of an up-tempo game. But ultimately, it's up to um, the quality of, and depth that you have on your bench, how many you're going to end up playing right. or how many you're comfortable with. And, you know, that comes in practice like so many other things. Um, Coaches get comfortable with players in practice because, you know, you've seen them do those things. Or when they get their chance in the game, they've gone in and they've performed, sure. and then they'll get that chance again. Right. It's uh, great to watch your kids, and it's great to have the kind of veterans you've got coming back this year. Well, I, there, there's no substitute for experience. I mean, um, you know, after this year, we graduate all those seniors, and, um, we won't have um, all that veteran experience coming back. But mm -hmm. I think that's why it's important that as a coach, you still have to keep an eye on the future. And, you know, like we have a sophomore that's up with our varsity guys, we have another sophomore that practices with us, uh, played in the scrimmage with sure. us, and then we have two juniors. So, I mean, if you only play seven guys and they're all seven seniors and you return <laughs> no experience, then playing experience for the following year, that's, that's tough. So we'll, we will have had guys that have been in the trenches, maybe not at the same uh, level or for the same amount of time, but they will have been in the trenches and, and, and seen and heard uh, what will be expected of them when they become seniors or juniors and seniors as well. Who's helping you, Coach? You know, we had bring back the same staff uh, with one exception this year. J.D. Miller and Chris Bottomley are the varsity assistants. Um, Charles Peterson is our junior varsity basketball coach. Mm -hmm. And then Jacob Stewart, who came on board last year, helps both with the JV and the varsity as well. Um, he was a very welcome addition. We actually coached against him. Uh, he was a player at Centerville. Then he was an assistant there. And when we got a chance to bring him over <laughs> last year, we did. Um, been very happy about that. And then the freshman staff is where our change has taken place at this year. Um, Joey Seidel was unable to return. Um, another former Connorsville alumni, Chris Bloom, is now our f head freshman coach, and um, Tim Billups has stuck around to help him and assist him. And you know, Tim's been here as a father most of the time, but the last two years he's been on the staff as an assistant at the freshman level, and he's had three boys go through our program, so um, he's pretty familiar with um, how things have how things have been done. Chris is your tennis coach. Chris, uh, Chris Blue, Blue, who is yes. the tennis coach, yes, That's is good. our freshman okay. boys coach now. So um, he expressed some interest when it opened up, and um, we're glad to have him back I'll helping bet. us out. Sure. Right. And, uh, always, always nice to have a former Spartan player <laughs> as part of that as well. Well, um, Charles is, Chris mm -hmm. Bottomley is, uh, Chris Bloom is, of course, J.D. and me and Tim Billups and Jacob are kind of outsiders, but then if you get down to the middle school, uh, Brian Munchell was a Spartan. Mm -hmm. Chad mm -hmm. uh, French was a Spartan. Uh, Zach Henderson was a Spartan. And I think Kevin e Gibson even played a mm -hmm. little bit. I'm not sure if he played all the way through, but I know he played. He played. Um, mm -hmm. So we've got guys that are 
um, invested and, and they want to see us do well because um, you know they themselves are alumni and, and former Spartans. It's a family tradition. It is. <laughs> We want to talk a minute about the ladies Spartans. Yeah. yeah. Uh, those young ladies are doing pretty well. Sam, tell us about their last ball game. Well, uh, they won three in a row. That's I will right. say that. Yeah, Shenandoah, Centerville, and and a pretty good Anderson team. Anderson, uh, the girls every year they're very scrappy and they reach <laughs> a lot and and they're they're pretty quick and athletic. Uh, hard team, hard team to match up against. I think. And oh, absolutely. But uh, what they were down 14 at halftime, or 14 going into the fourth quarter, and uh, we probably between TV3 and and KMEX, we probably lost a lot of our audience. <laughs> uh, they probably wish they would have stuck around that, sure. because uh, the girls just uh, Dave, my broadcast partner, always says when we're down that you're not going to get them all back at once. You just have to chip away <laughs> and chip away, and that's what they did. In that fourth quarter, and I think they really frustrated Anderson. Um, came down to seven tenths of a second left, and uh, we're inbounding under our own basket, and they get it into the freshman Jones girl, and she drilled a three pointer <laughs> to win it. it. It was. I've not had that much fun in a long time. Let me let me tell you, that was that was just exciting to see. Uh, I'm sure we have some film on it here. And I saw some people on social media saying, well, you know, it's a timekeeper and, and this and that. I, I don't really buy that with the people that, that, sure. that do that. Uh, the other thing is that, you know, we were making baseball passes from one end of the floor to the other. Well, uh, you can go that 90 feet, but uh, it doesn't, the clock doesn't start until somebody touches the ball. Mm -hmm. it, I think it was 1.7 on the clock. Anderson deflected it going out of bounds, and that set up for us to have it under the basket uh, with seven tenths of a second, which is uh, only enough, Coach, to to catch and shoot. Mm -hmm. You can't do much else, and less than that, about all you can do is tip. I think anything less than point four, I believe, has to be just a tip. But uh, <laughs> more than point four is a quick catch and shoot. Mm -hmm. And that uh, ice water in that freshman's veins there, I think, that uh, to have the mm -hmm. presence of mind to do that. It's a big shot, especially for a, a young lady. Mm -hmm. Big shot. I've, you know, we've, I've seen the boys, some the guys hit shots over the years, but um, uh, to be a freshman and step up in that situation, that's, that's really good. Yeah, I... Uh... Took me a while to wind down after I got home. I can imagine. <laughs> Let's watch some of the highlights from the ball game at Spartan Bowl. I really think this uh, this is probably the best win that Coach Harder's had since she's been there, and she's steadily building this team. We we knew yes. it wasn't going to happen overnight. But there's J.C. taking it in for the layup. She had a nice game. She's really coming along for the sophomore. And there was a freshman Bennett that just passed up ahead once again, and uh, to JC. And all that time, they, uh, you see, also there at the end of the Anderson bench, uh, Ray Tolbert, who was on the 1981 Indiana Hoosiers national championship team, uh, I had an opportunity to talk to him. Great guy. Uh, bank man, the bank was open from the three pointers a couple times as uh, Haley Simbach drilled that one. <laughs> and uh, here's the freshman Bennett. I think she's got a lot of a lot of promise too. She's not afraid to go in and she can really jump. She's not very tall, but, but she has a great vertical leap. I like how unselfish they are. They, I think they do a good job of sharing the basketball and making the extra pass. And at least when I've watched them, mm -hmm. um, I believe that's the strength of the team. And uh, to be above 500 at this point, when you look at the competition that they've played, you know, we open up with New Pal and we go to Mount Vernon. Yes. Uh, played Decatur Central and, and now Anderson. Um, their first part of their schedule is brutal, I think. But, uh, and then this week they get into conference play. So, as I said, uh, Michelle's doing a, doing a nice job with them. So, uh, Still with four minutes to go, we're down double digits, but cut it right there. And uh, you know, you get to within two two possessions under a minute, anything can happen, Coach. Was that uh, Haley banking another one mm -hmm. in? Yep. 
<laughs> yeah, she uh, she has uh, she's one of those players that, uh, with some nice size can yep. play inside and out. Yes, she is. And there it is, right there, bullseye, and uh, that was the game winner. And good crowd on hand uh, yeah, Saturday night too. Yes, was, that it was, was good to see. That. That's a lot of fun. Yeah, sometimes, Coach, everything goes right. You need everything to fall in place. <laughs> that's I mean, right. <laughs> you just step up and, and make a play, and, and that's what players do, uh, especially at crunch time. Get a stop or step up and make a shot sure. uh, to help your team be successful. So that's a, just that's about making plays. Kids are ready to play. team with, with just three seniors on that team. So That's great. Mm -hmm. Kids are ready to play, and that's very important, Coach, that your team is ready to play. And how do you – Every possession. How do you prepare them? Well, I don't know. If, if, <laughs> if you know that answer, you can okay. make a lot of money, Sam. <laughs> I feel like sometimes we are ready to play, and there's other times I'm not quite sure that we're as ready as I would like for them to be. Uh -huh. um, and we've talked recently about, you know, playing every possession, and I think that's both mentally and physically, and we're going to stress that again um, to our guys between now and Wednesday, and we're going to stress that to our guys is that between now and the end of the season, playing every – being engaged – both physically sure. and mentally, every possession of the game. And I think if you are, um, that's going to give you a, a, a greater opportunity to be successful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're starting your fourth year as the head of the Spartans? You know, I'm not sure if it's 14 or 15 now. I'm, I'm starting to lose track. Um, I'll be <laughs> I'm honest, I'm not I'm sure. It's, it might man, be 15. I'm, thinking, I, I'm not even sure anymore. Uh, it's been a good run, whatever. Uh, num the number is, but uh, it's either 14 or 15. Okay, I'm not well, even sure. we'll, we'll look it up and uh, And you're going to hit a big mile it. milestone this year, too, with your 300th uh, win overall will be coming up, I think, in, uh, with eight more wins. So, Yeah, the uh, IBCA sent something to me about uh, wanting some information on that, so um, that drew my attention to it. I, I, I couldn't tell you, you know, what, what it is. Um, but I did get an email from them wanting some information. And to me, that means I've had a lot of good assistants and um, <laughs> I've had a lot of good players over the years. And, you know, I, I've coached teams that didn't have very good records and I've coached some teams that almost uh, ran, you know, undefeated for the entire year going 27-1. and one. So I've been on both sides mm -hmm. of um, as successful as you can be and as almost as unsuccessful as you can be and um, just makes you appreciate. Uh, it's not necessarily about the wins and the losses. It's about, you know, the kids, the players, the assistants, and the relationships that um, are developed over the years with those t players and the assistant coaches as well. Been a lot of um, good basketball memories for so Karen Brown over the years. You've been in the business over 20 years, I think. And You know, I started coaching middle school basketball in 1985, uh, Milroy junior high, middle school, and then made my way up through the Rushville system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, back in the old days, it was a little different. You paid your dues and you moved up the ladder, and, and I did. Um, I coached at every level until I became a varsity basketball coach and then um, been in South Dearborn prior to coming to Connorsville, Rushville before that, and then I was at Edinburgh one year just as the athletic director. I did not coach that one year over there, but um, those three schools have been in southeastern Indiana, and um, it's been a good journey. It's has been, it changed? It's been pretty good. Uh, has the, the game changed, Kerry, in those number of years? Um, yes and no. I mean, things like the three-pointer came in. Yes. Um, some rule changes type things like that. But to be honest, I don't think kids have changed. I mean, okay. I, think, I think they're the same as they were. I the think, ball is still round. Uh, the ball's round. The court's the same size. <laughs> uh, they're talking about other changes like the shot clock. But I think, um, you know, offensive and defensively, people still run the same things. There, there are some differences, obviously, um, that they've done since, you know, I've been around. Sure. Um, and before me. But um, I think kids are, are – I think they are the same. Um, or near the same as they've been yes. uh, during this entire time. I think most kids still want Coach Tar, they want discipline. Um, and uh, you hear that they don't, but I, I don't agree with that necessarily, at least the kids that I've um, 
experienced in my years, mm -hmm. especially, you know, being here near the end, probably here at Connersville. Um, I think kids for the most part are the same. Sure. Mom and dad sometimes. No, Maybe I think they're probably the same too, same. Sam. I mean, their <laughs> blood's thicker than water. Right. right. <laughs> you know, they 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 want um, for for their kids, and and you can understand that. Sure. But at the same time, as a coach, then we're, um, you know, we're seeing it from a, a different perspective. Mm -hmm. So, um, my mom, sure, my mom, dad were the same way. They just. Uh, maybe we're a little more reserved, but they maybe had the same thoughts as, uh, as other parents did. But mm -hmm. uh, I, I think overall it's been pretty much the, the same, both players and parents. Uh, their their interest, um, you know, they love their sons and their daughters, and they want what's best for them, and mm -hmm. um, that's only natural. Here's the schedule for this week at CHS and the middle school. Monday, the freshman basketball team opens their season at Greensburg. The middle school... Red team is home with Greensburg. On Tuesday, the middle school white teams will be at Franklin County, and the red teams will be home with Nicetown. On Wednesday, Spartan basketball season opener with Union County. Games at 6 and 7.30 at Spartan Bowl. On Saturday, wrestling at Homestead. That's at Fort Wayne, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, right? Yep. yep. Okay, Homestead from Fort Wayne. Wayne. Wednesday at 9 o'clock in the morning uh, is when they're Early departure. Then, right. The Lady Spartans basketball home with Batesville. Their game's at 1 o'clock, the JV game. It's followed by the varsity at 2.30. And then the Spartan basketball will be at Delta at 6 and 7.30 at night. So big schedule coming up here. Be a road trip for us Saturday night. Um, I think Delta, Coach Detweather's up there, done a great job. Yes. And I think they're going to be, uh, have a strong basketball team this year. They return uh, probably their leading score best player and then they've got some athletes um, like we do and they've got some football players like we do and uh, they've got some athleticism so on paper I think it'll be a good matchup. Well coached team. And well coached, uh, yeah. Wednesday night, big night, uh, 1972 state champions will be there, That's ones that, that can be there and uh, understand Coach Dickerson's coming and good. it's going to be great to see those guys 50 good. years later. They're, you know, the tradition goes back before that, but, but uh, that team really solidified uh, this fan base right here in Connersville. It was the first championship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you I mean, were there. That's special. I mean, that's yes. only been done twice. That's right. So, <laughs> you know, that's very special what those two teams in those two years were mm -hmm. able to, to accomplish. It just, you know, it doesn't happen very often. No. At all. No. no. And it. Um, Took a lot of talent, uh, took a lot of uh, skill, uh, took some good coaching, but took a heck of a lot of luck. Uh, anytime you can make it that far. That's right. Yeah. You guys remember better than me, but <clears throat> Gerald Thomas and um, mm -hmm. Larry Miller and um, help me guys. Jimmy Free. Jimmy Free, but um, uh, oh, Ellis, Phil, right? Phil Cox. Yep, yeah, Phil Cox. I mean, Mr. Basketball. That was. We had, uh, uh, a good basketball team, and you and I know the, some of the main ones, but you guys know the, the guys that mm -hmm. were also in that rotation right. better than I do. That was a, a great team. Uh, I understand that toward the end of the championship game, the uh, reserves are going to come in. The coaches are going to send some of the reserves in, and the reserve kids said, no, let the, let the guys <laughs> finish the team, finish the game, uh -huh. and go on for the championships. My recollection, of, well, it was... Um, um, Gerald Thomas played at Purdue. Mm -hmm. and I'm being from Northern Indiana. That was one of the, you know, we always watched them in Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. But uh, and then Larry Miller actually went to uh, Valdosta State right. with um, some guys from my hometown mm -hmm. that were really good players. A guy named Don Reason who played professionally in France, and then uh, Mike Clyde. Mm -hmm. So that was neat for me when I found that out yeah. uh, that he had been down there and uh, just a lot of connections. Yeah, yeah. Hope hope a lot of them are able to make it. And of course, several have passed. Well, we hope so, too, and I hope it's a good night. Mm -hmm. and the weather hangs up right now. It looks good, so yeah. there shouldn't be any problems for the folks getting to Spartan Bowl. Going to warm up a little bit, <laughs> I understand, which would be welcome. Yes, it will. Kerry, thanks so much, and the best of luck to you and the team, and uh, I know you're going to have a great, great season here at CHS this year. Thank you. Appreciate you guys having me, and I'll come back again if you'll have me. We will. Thank you. you Thank no you. doubt about it, right. Thanks, everybody, for watching this edition of the Spartan Sports Report here on TV3. Have a nice evening.